Okay, so I'm going to just call the meeting into order of uh, 8 o'clock on September the 9th. I already uh, acknowledged all the... Yes, I know she is. And I acknowledged all of the members at of council and staff. And now the first item on the agenda is question period. And the first questioner is uh, Mrs. Lang. Welcome, Miriam Hello. Lang. Uh, this is really the first time that I've come to this podium. <laughs> I'm happy to see you all. And I'm coming here not just because there's a specific house on McMurray, but I have a concern. And the concern that I have is when we moved in, my husband and I, who was the former mayor here, when we moved in, Cote St. Luke was a little village. And over the years, I've been, been very happy to see our city developing into a beautiful, comfortable city where people want to live. What has been disturbing me lately is that as I go through the city on certain streets, all of a sudden, next to beautiful little bungalows or split levels, there's this monster of a house that just does not belong. And I'm beginning to see this throughout the city. And I have a concern, and the concern I have is that when this city was being built and developed, it was a city to provide a wonderful place for people to live and enjoy. And there was a, a harmonious look in all our streets. What's happening now is these big monster homes are being built, homes are being destroyed, neighbors next to these are being really uncomfortable, to say the least. And what's happening is that suddenly it doesn't matter that there are citizens who are living on these streets, who are happy with their homes, who have well-built homes and a well-developed community around them. And suddenly a house is being destroyed and a monster house is being put up, which does not belong in that particular group. I know that there are new buildings that are going up. These buildings are going up around the Cavendish Mall. That's fine. There are new buildings, new homes, and new streets. It's not disturbing any other citizens. What's happening now, and I ask myself, what is the council doing by allowing this to happen? You're going to tell me that it's a law that it can happen against, but there should be a law that the, the house has to fit in harmoniously and that a house shouldn't be destroyed just because somebody wants to build a big house. I'm asking the council to reconsider. I know that when my husband was mayor, there was a town planning commission and there were very strict rules there. For any exemption, what was looked at is not only the law about whether the exemption was good or not, but whether the character of what was being asked for would fit into the street and the neighborhood. And that's what I'm asking you as a counselor to begin to consider and to realize that you're putting citizens who are, are being disturbed and are being really uh, almost not thought about when I was listening to this gentleman who I don't know who's going to be next door to this uh, house and his, his quality of life is going to be totally destroyed for a year or more while this is going on. Okay. Th thank you so much for coming and I also want to, if you would, for 1954 you've lived here, conversations with the mayor I do to get the history. Daryl Levine, uh, Mrs. Lang has a lot of history on this city. I'd love if she'd be willing to do an interview on what was and where we're going. But on this particular topic, and I'm going to ask staff to check, I don't know how much our bylaws have changed with respect to this issue since uh, Mayor Lang was mayor. I don't think they've changed that much. I'd like to get a little analysis on that. This 25% allowance for neighboring homes, I'm going to check it out because I'd be very interested to know the history. 
Um, but we always try to have uh, bylaws that make the most sense for the development of the city. And of course, if there are things that should be changed in the future, uh, we would consider them. So I, I want to look at the history. I'm going to task uh, Maitre Schechter to look at the history of our bylaw on this type of um, reconstruction of building on streets and see how far back it goes with respect to the height allowance of 25% for the neighborhood. It's I also you want you to re know how reconsider long we've had that. that uh, the requirement and that ability to allow people to build based on their neighbors 25% higher. How long in time has that existed? I just ask you to also consider very carefully what it would the impact on people who are living in that do. area. And that's why it's being sent back specifically with that in mind on how we can reduce the impact to the neighborhood in terms of its look and fitting into the neighborhood. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next questioner is Toby Shulman. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This afternoon, I was at the Users Committee at uh, Maimonides, and uh, something very disturbing came up. Apparently, the, a lot of the residents are not able to be showered there's not enough water pressure, and uh, even when there is, it's cold. I know they're doing a lot of work on uh, putting up new... Um, You're talking about Maimonides Hospital? Yeah. Geriatric Center? New, sh new shower renovations they're doing and everything, and I know that these things happen, but what disturbed me was they said that when there's work being done on their street, they're never notified. Now, we get notified emails, we get phone calls, we get text messages when anything's going on around our area. And I was very surprised and disturbed to hear that they don't know when things are going on. And maybe they would decide that day that they're not gonna shower anybody if there's not gonna be any water and, and if it's gonna be cold or, or, or whatever. I don't know who you spoke to, but I'm, I mean, it's, it's a big facility, so I don't know who you spoke to, but I'm pretty sure and I'll verify that the proper authorities do receive notification in an establishment of that nature and will Check that out with urban planning. Okay, I'd appreciate that. And the second thing is, I wanted to have an update on uh, the Elie Wiesel uh, Parquet, when, uh, when it will be ready for people to come and sit in it and see the different uh, information that uh, right. well, the, the design council was wants. Made, the design was made as it was built, and um, as we, you spoke recently with myself and also with uh, Director Levine, he's in plans right now to make certain plaques to present them to council for approval that talk of one, the history of uh, Elie Wiesel, and the other, the history of the Holocaust. And those have already been drafted and he's having them presented to council for approval and then we will install them in the Is park. Is there a timeline? Places. Will it be in timeline. 2019, 2020? It should be in 2019. Okay, thank Thanks. you very much. Do you have any other questioners? Yes, please come forward. I, yeah, I have your name here and I already called your name prior. Keep, keep Thank you. Go ahead, yes. As I said, I was, uh, I'm concerned about the environment as everybody is and I suppose you already took notice you're not having plastic bottles from the, uh, uh, from the building. Um, I'm just wondering if the city can educate the pub public a little bit more about recycling issues so that, for example, um, um, uh, what is it? Um, no, I don't have the word. We have pizza, pizza, um, pizza containers don't go into the recycling and similar things like this. I live in a large apartment building and there's unbelievable things thrown into these recycling bins. I'm concerned about the 60% of bugs that have disappeared, as well as birds and all this, and I wonder if the city can do something about this. Have more meadows in town than lawns. I was cycling around and I saw so many lawns and not really meadows, where just wildlife, flowers, where the bees and bugs can go. Um, and I wonder if you can decrease mowing in public spaces. Um, it has partly, it is partly being done on the side of the highways. 
that only a meter, two meters being mowed and not the whole area, not around uh, the partitions or the, the, the two streets, if that can be done. Um, so we have more place for the bugs as well. Can you maybe subsidize bee-friendly flora? Give it to your, um, to your inhabitants. Give them some money so that they buy packets with, uh, with flower seeds so that bees can come. So I think we'll take note of that all in the minutes and send that off to a public works and our horticulturalist and environmental technician so that they're aware of your ideas. And we also have a whole recycling, composting, and garbage plan yeah. and new plans for the future. I'm sure, but it's just that we need less lawn and more meadows. Okay, thank you. So, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Name and address, please. Uh, it's Sean Berry. It's um, 5804 Palmer Avenue. Uh, so I, it's also a question about the environment. Um, I know some municipalities, I believe, have banned uh, gas-powered mowers for environmental reasons. Um, I'm wondering if Cote St. Luke had plans to do the same. Not to my knowledge. Anybody hear of that? So if I may, we, uh, we've looked in the past, and it's something we're looking at in terms of gas-powered blowers, in terms of for the leaf blowers. Okay. Uh, but we haven't looked yet at gas-powered mowers, but definitely something we could look at. Yeah, I, I think it'd be a great idea if you could do it. Thank you. OK, thanks. So if there's no further questions, I will move to the next item on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes. Councillor Kovac. I'll move, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? All in favor? So that's for the minutes of the regular uh, council meeting of August the 12th and the special council meeting of August the 26th. Business arising from the council minutes, departmental reports. Councilor Kovac. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the departmental reports from the Eleanor London Library all the way down to the police department as tabled. Moved by Councilor Kovac, seconded by Councilor Kajafsky. Any discussion? Who wants to talk about the, council, uh, the department of reports? Steven? Steven's going to start. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A few items to report um, on the finance portfolio. Uh, just to update from last meeting. Uh, at the last meeting, we had we had requested a loan of four million dollars. Uh, this to cover vehicles that were purchased in the past and some of the work at the arena that is going on right now. Uh, at the time, we hadn't finalized the interest rate. Uh, which came just after the last meeting, or after the last meeting, before this meeting. Uh, over the years, we got a rate ranging from 1.85% to 2% when you factor in all the, the service fees and so on. It works out to a, a rate of approximately 2.3%, so I'm happy that we got a relatively low interest rate. Uh, I also wanted to share that on September 11th, in just a few days, the new evaluation role will be available online through the City of Montreal's website. So if you go to Eval Web and you search it, you can find your new evaluation. That'll be for the new role that begins officially January 1st, 2020. It goes for three years. And we are going to be holding a, an information session on September 23rd, so two weeks from today at 6 p.m. And we'll explain to residents about a bit more information about the new role, uh, if they are interested, how they can contest. So. Uh, any resident who's not happy with their new evaluation can contest. There are fees and rules and regulations, so we'll explain a bit more about that. Uh, and of course, give a better understanding to residents. Keeping in mind, though, uh, each time there's a new evaluation role, the city uh, adjusts the mill rate or the tax rate so that, so some residents might get scared if you get a 10% increase in your evaluation doesn't mean you're going to have a 10% increase in your taxes, because usually the city adjusts the rate based on the average increase for all the homes in Cote St. Luke. So it's important for you to look at not just your rate, not just how much your property increased, but how it relates compared to the average for the city of Cote St. Luke. And again, it is a bit complicated. So if you're interested, two weeks from today, September 23rd, 6 p.m. in the council chamber, we'll explain more about the process and give you more information to answer some of those more difficult questions. Thank you, Councillor Erdl. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Benioz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just would like to report this is for uh, 
public service. I just would like to report that the big drop-off uh, drop uh, drop -off was a great success on Sunday, August 25th. Uh, more than 200, uh, 230 residents show up on this day. Uh, J'aimerais aussi mentionner qu'un grand nettoyage uh, s'est déroulé au Boisé d'Ashkelon. Plus de 10 284 plans évasifs ont été enlevés. Uh, concerning the asphalt work, the path on uh, Brookside was done. I know that we had a lot of requests from residents. And also, uh, the asphalt team did many repairs in different streets of the city. So I would like to thank uh, all the team of uh, public work. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Benizri. Anyone else? Councilor Kajaski, you want to give an update on our big run, or did we do that already? No. I uh, could give a brief overview. So we, we finished our, our remount of Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat at, uh, at the Siegel Center. And uh, I, I guess we can call it a success. We, um, we ended up combining two of the Friday shows because one of them was a little weaker on the sales side. But in the end, we actually sold 90% of our available tickets. It's something we'd never really done before is, is marketed a show from scratch and not relied on the word of mouth that normally carries our shows. Um, so I'd say selling 90% of the tickets is a pretty big success. And, and speaking even, even to the Siegel Center box office, they were, I'd say, shocked at how many tickets we sold as a community theater uh, at a professional venue. So uh, congratulations to everyone um, in Joseph and to the Parks and Recreation Department, those who helped out, all the staff members, um, and thanks for, to the support of council and the mayor. And uh, yeah, I'll miss it. I'll miss Joseph. Yeah, 1,500 people came to see it in five days, which was very nice. And. Uh, wow. Good job, uh, Councilor Kajavsky, because you did uh, most of that uh, promotion, so good stuff. Uh, anyone else? Councilor Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, Coatsy Loop Cats Committee will hold its annual benefit concert on Thursday, October 24th. We keep moving it back uh, to, to, to ensure there's no heat. Last year we moved it from August to October. The one night of a heat wave was that night. It won't be October 24th, I assure you. Uh, we have the musicians of the World Symphony Orchestra. Tickets went on sale on Friday. And I want to thank Jack Singer, um, who, uh, who uh, does some wonderful things because he and his wife have been feeding outdoor cats um, for several years, uh, feral cats. I went to his home last night and saw these feral cats who, when he opens the door, they run from him, but they literally live on his balcony. And sadly, but good for Jack. Jack has sold his house and he's moving out of Cote St. Luke and now we're, we're making arrangements with the Cats Committee to find a way to take care of these cats because that's the only place they know where to get food. And Jack bought um, a whole set of uh, executive uh, VIP tickets for the concert, which are $25. So tickets are on sale at the library and at the Cote St. Luke uh, Hospital for Animals. Uh, we hope people will come support us. It's a great evening and uh, there'll be more information to come. Uh, yesterday, uh, moving from cats to dogs, we had the uh, the dog owners committee. Uh, well, the sorry, the uh, walk for the autism walk, dog walk. We had a very nice weather. We had a lot of dog owners there with their um, with their dogs, and uh, they were. We did a walk through Trudeau Park, and uh, we had um, basically the importance of companionship and uh, the connection to those who are on the spectrum. Uh, you could read my blog for for more information. I was happy to to be there with Jonathan Goldman, who is our chairman of the Dog Owners Committee. I thought um, you were, that's it? Uh, just uh, one last thing. Uh, I just want to thank Public Works for the work they're doing in uh, phase two in the Ashkelon Woodlands. That's right next to um, the parking lot. Uh, people may have seen that we've had to cut down a lot of diseased trees. We also have now removed 10,284 stems of buckthorn. These are invasive plants. Uh, this is an area of 4,500 square meters, which is equivalent to approximately half of the service, uh, surface covered. We also collected uh, inorganic waste in the woods for an equivalent of 10 garbage bags. So I want to thank the team. They did a great job uh, and efforts for the re reforestation. Phase three will be coming in the fall. Um, so that's it, Mr. Mayor. I'll have more news to come on green space as tomorrow I take a tour of um, some more uh, of our uh, land uh, right near uh, Isidore Goldberg Park, 
where some work is going to have to be done, and I'll be going with Ms. Newman for a tour very early tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So from dogs to cats to art, um, the, um, our, our library is a fantastic place to go visit. Uh, we have two areas, the community art space and the art corridor, uh, which I only found out this week has a two-year waiting list to display your art on, uh, which means we have a tremendous amount of local artists, uh, community artists that are displaying their art, and really a beautiful thing to see when you're perusing and you want to find your books. Um, some upcoming events, there's story time for children and for adults, uh, but in, in one, two important things I wanted to bring up were um, on Tuesday, September 17th, uh, there will be a nutritionist that will be at the library. Um, so if you have any questions for your toddlers uh, for, and for children and caregivers, it's a great time to have access to nutritionists. Um, and there will also be a nurse available on September 24th. Alors, il va y avoir une infirmière qui va être euh, euh, accessible à la bibliothèque le 24 septembre. Um, et si vous voulez venir voir une, une infirmière pour demander des questions sans aller au CLSC pour euh, et attendre, c'est une bonne opportunité. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> okay. Thank you all. So I just want to mention that we did have a, an appreciation uh, corn roast for our staff. Very proud of all our staff, from the blues, the whites, the professionals, our management team. And we serve staff, the management team, and politicians. And it was a great event. And uh, shortly we'll be having our volunteer appreciation night. So really it's thanks to our staff and our volunteers uh, and council, all working as a team, that we have this wonderful city. So moved uh, and seconded, all in favor of the departmental reports. Anyone opposed? <coughs> Carried unanimously. We move on to item number five. Um, Councillor Torchman, public, the Eleanor London Public Library, 5A. <laughs> this is the fee schedule for the uh, public library. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That bylaw 2536 entitled bylaw creating the fee schedule for the Eleanor London Cote St. Luke Public Library for September 20. 19 to March 2020 period, B and is hereby adopted. Moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kajavsky. Any discussion? It's just a fee schedule for the library. Uh, it's a regular housekeeping item. Lots of great programs at the library. Some are free, some have minor fees. So moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. Moved to item number six, financial services. 6A, Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the attached list of disbursements for the period of August 1st, 2019 to August 31st, 2019 <laughs> for a total amount of $4,613,188.77 in Canadian funds and that Treasurer Certificate Number 19-0116 dated September 4th, 2019 has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by... Councillor, who would like to second this? Councillor Kajafsky, any discussion? So just to mention a few of the big items. Uh, so we have a bond repayment, uh, which was done last month in August. Uh, we also have fees for our water services management through CMO and uh, another installment towards the work being done at the arena uh, right now. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item 6B, Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, just making sure I have the... Supplemental pension plan. Yeah, just making sure I have the updated version in front of me. Be it resolved that bylaw 2538 entitled bylaw to replace bylaw 2372 and its amendment bylaw 2391 concerning the supplemental pension plan for the employees of the City of Cote St. Luke be and is hereby adopted and that the adopted plan text shall come into force in accordance with the applicable legislations, but shall take effect starting on January 1st, 2014. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? Councillor So just to explain, uh, what happened a few years ago is the government changed the regulations relating, relating to pensions uh, for municipals, uh, municipal pensions throughout the province of Quebec, so not just uh, Cote St. Luke. Uh, so based on that, we had to revise the the bylaws relating to the pension plan. Uh, so it, it took a little while because we were waiting on a few things to happen, but all that to say uh, the revisions have been made in accordance with the law 
and uh, comes into effect and backdated to January 1st, 2014, which is when the provincial government's legislation came into effect. Thank you, Councillor Early. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried in. One technical Go ahead. It was just carried unanimously. Thank you. And now we move to item 6C, Councillor Early. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Cote St. Luke City Council hereby awards a contract for the purchase of Cisco switches to Informatic Pro Contact Inc. for a total amount of $47,460 plus applicable taxes. That $45,000 plus applicable taxes of the described expenses shall be financed from the city's working fund as a non-interest bearing loan and the remainder from the operating budget. That the council shall provide every year out of its general fund a sum sufficient to repay the loan back into the working fund. That the terms of repayment shall not exceed five years. That $2,460 plus applicable tax of the described expenses shall be financed from the city's operating budget. And that treasurer certificate number 19-0117 Dated September 4, 2019, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability funds to cover the described expenses. Thank you, Councillor Erdley. Seconded by Councillor Kajowski. Any discussion? Councillor so, Erdley. So just to mention, this is part of uh, our three-year capital projects plan, uh, that we are upgrading some of the Cisco switches uh, to make sure that we're betting, better meeting the IT needs of the City. Uh, and we looked at different options, and uh, this is the, the one that was recommended by our, our IT team. So being moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item 7, which is Legal Services City Clerk 7A. Councillor Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, so move that Councillor Sidney Ben-Ezri is and shall be named Acting Mayor of the City of Coatsy Luke, effective October first 2019 up to and until December 31st 2019 inclusively and further that the aforementioned councillor Ben Isri shall have and may exercise the powers of the mayor when the said mayor is absent or unable to perform the duties of his office. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. Any discussion? The only thing that I will discuss and clarify for the public, some people think that the acting mayor means that I go on vacation for three months, <laughs> not the case. He's only there to fulfill my duties if I cannot at any time. So thank you for being there for me. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. He's in favor too. We're all in favor. Okay, now we move to item 7B, Councillor Cohen. Oh, was I B too? Uh, yeah. Okay, I just switched. I just flipped over to, uh, I'll be there. I it's just not a complicated over. one. No, I just flipped over to a C, so. Um, I, that's okay, I've got it. I'm, a, uh, I'm saving paper. Um, I so move that Council hereby authorizes to hold its regular monthly sittings for the 2020 calendar year as set out in the sitting schedule annexed herewith as Annex A to form an integral part of the minutes. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? That's just the list of all the dates of the Council meetings for the 2020 year. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. Now we have dates. Published in the suburban. They'll be published in the suburban, and everybody's welcome to all those meetings. So now we move on to item number 7C, Councillor Kovac. 7C, which is a special item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby authorizes the hiring of the firm Belanger Sauvé to take legal action against Palmer Lowe Incorporated and MHPM Gestion Projet Incorporated, now called Collier's Maître de Projet, related to any and all deficiencies related to the Aquatic and Community Centre. That the aforementioned firm shall be and is hereby authorized to file any legal proceedings it deems useful related to the aforementioned matter. And that the Treasurer's Certificate Number 19-0118, uh, dated uh, August 28, 2019, uh, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor K 
Cohen, and that's to allow the city to take any uh, action Even, against okay. Parmelo uh, with respect to fine. deficiencies in their aquatic and community center should we not be able to uh, settle with them prior. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And we move on to item 7D, which is uh, Councilor Benizri. Merci, Monsieur le Maire. Et résolu que le Conseil municipal de Côte Saint-Luc autorise le greffier ou l'assistant greffier à signer le formulaire intitulé Certificat de conformité à la réglementation municipale d'urbanisme pour Sababa Resto. So this. Okay, so move by Councillor Ben Isri, seconded by Councillor Torgman. Any discussion? Just to mention that this is uh, regarding a request for a uh, uh, liquor permit for uh, a restaurant, a new restaurant at uh, Square des Carré, Sababa. Sababa. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? So now you have a place to go and eat and drink. Uh, now we move on to item number E, uh, Councillor Cohen. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, I am moving there right now. Uh, I so move that the City Council hereby amends the July 9, 2018 regular council meeting minutes in order for the City Clerk to be the official secretary thereof. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor um, Kajavski. Would it, was it 2018 or 2019? 2018. 2018. Okay. It's our old minutes that right. yeah, we need signed. Okay. That's fine. So it's moved and seconded. Just All in favor? Yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Okay. Everyone in favor? Fine. So now the minutes will be corrected as indicated. Thank you. Thank you, Matri Schechter. Um, carried unanimously. And now we move on to item 7F. Uh, Councillor Torchman or Councillor Kajaski? Councillor, Councillor Torchman, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that bylaw. 2321-4, entitled Bylaw 2321-4, to amend, sorry, to amending Bylaw 2321 concerning the speed, speed in streets in order to modify the speed limit on Kildare Avenue and Guelph Road, be and is hereby adopted. Okay, moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kajavski. Any discussion? Um, this is uh, just part of a, a global effort to reduce speed and increase pedestrian safety. Uh, we're in implementing various pedestrian safety measures. Um, and on Guelph and Kildare, uh, we had in co consultation with the police and our traffic committee, uh, and also by just driving around, we realized uh, some portions of the street went from 40 kilometers an hour to 30 kilometers in a school zone or park area, and then went up to 50 and then back down to 30. So it didn't quite make sense. It was hard for the police to enforce, um, and uh, having it at 40 kilometers as a standard on these two collectors and 30 kilometers an hour in the park and school zones will just increase the safety for all pedestrians. So. Um uh, our communications director spent a little bit of time on social media, polling the community and getting their input. Some were in favor and some were opposed. But on the issue of whether changing posted speed limits works or not, it turns out that they actually do. And that in the city of Boston, they did something similar to what we're proposing. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety compared speeds before and after Boston lowered its speed limit from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour, which converts to 48 kilometers per hour to 40. The study found that the odds of a Boston driver exceeding 35 miles per hour after the speed limit change decreased by 29%. And the odds a driver would exceed 30 miles per hour declined by 8.5%. In other words, changing the posted speed limit changed the behavior. On the second point that we should consider is what does this do in terms of improving safety for people of all ages and for the kids who walk on our streets? Now, this data, it's a little sad to hear, but these are the facts. If you're hit by a car that's moving at 30 kilometers an hour, you have a 90% chance of survival. But if they're going 40 kilometers per hour, you have a 70% chance of survival. If you're hit by a car moving at 50 kilometers per hour, you have a 20% chance of survival. So obviously we hope that this change will have a positive impact on drivers and when you reduce your speed, particularly in a municipality like Cote St. Luke, which is a bedroom community, we are improving the safety 
of the neighborhood and uh, hopefully saving some lives. So uh, moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move on to item eight, which is public works, A8A, eight, eight, Council of Israel. Merci, Monsieur le Maire. Est résolu que le Conseil municipal de Côte Saint-Luc octroie par la présente un contrat pour l'achat d'un camion roll-off neuf à Globocam Montréal Incorporé, le plus bas soumissionnaire conforme, conformément aux conditions de l'appel d'offres C-17-19 pour un montant total de 199 809 dollars plus les taxes applicables, que les dépenses décrites seront financées par le règlement d'emprunt 25-27, déjà approuvé par le ministère des Affaires municipales et habitations, que le certificat du trésorier numéro TC 19-0115, daté du 4 septembre 2019, a été émis par le trésorier de la ville, attestant la disponibilité des fonds pour couvrir les dépenses décrites. Proposé par le conseiller Benizri et appuyé par le conseiller Kovac. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions? So we had uh, two bids and we're taking the lower bid mm -hmm. of a truck that's needed in public works. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? <coughs> Carried unanimously and we move on to the next item which is 8B, Council of Benizri. Yep. Merci, Monsieur le maire. Est résolu que le conseil municipal de Côte-Saint-Luc, conseil, déclare par la présente la soumission reçue de Donacona Chrysler Fiat non conforme d'un point de vue documentaire et par conséquent, cette soumission est rejetée. Que le conseil octroie par la présente un contrat pour l'achat de deux fourgons utilitaires neuf à trois diamants auto 1987 limités, le plus bas soumissionnaire conforme, conformément aux conditions de l'appel d'offres C-19-19, pour un montant total de 69 328 dollars et 64 et 74 sous, plus les taxes applicables. Que les dépenses décrites seront financées par le règlement d'emprunt 25-26, déjà approuvé par le ministère des Affaires municipales et Habitation. Que le certificat du trésorier numéro TC 19-0113, daté du 4 septembre 2019, a été émis par le trésorier de la ville, attestant la disponibilité des fonds pour couvrir les dépenses décrites. Proposé par le conseiller Benizri, appuyé par le conseiller Kovac. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions This is for this is for another uh, two uh, cargo vans, uh, 2019. And we did have two bids on this. Unfortunately, the lower bid did not have the proper bond, so they were disqualified. But the differential in price between the two was only uh, it was very close. So it appears to be a very uh, reasonable bid. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. Now we move on to urban plan. Uh, no. No. Uh, eight tree C Councilor Italy. Eight C Councilor Italy. Tree planting. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm uh, just pulling up here. Be it resolved that the Côte Saint Luke City Council hereby awards a contract to Le Terrassement Miti Paysage Inc. for the purchase and planting of trees pursuant to the terms of invited tender. C-22-19 in the amount of $86,967.50 plus applicable taxes that the described expenses shall be financed from loan bylaw 2503 previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et Habitations and that treasurer certificate number 19-0114 dated September 4, 2019 has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? So just to mention, uh, the goal uh, in the city of Cote St. Luke is to try to plant more trees than we're, we've been forced to cut down. Uh, the last several years, we've had to cut down quite a few because of the Emerald Ash Bore, and as mentioned by Councillor Benizri and Councillor Cohn, uh, in the Ashkelon Gardens as well, we had to cut down quite a few trees. Uh, so with this purchase, we'll be adding an extra 150 trees uh, with the, on top of the trees that have already been planted, plus the next few, uh, that should bring us to approximately 327 trees, new trees being planted this year. And the goal, again, over the next few years is to continue to plant more and more and hopefully catch up on the many trees that have had to be cut down because of the Emerald Ash Borer over the last few years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Erdling. So moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, we move to item uh, nine, urban development. Councillor Torchman, 9A. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Je donne un avis de motion que le règlement numéro 2088-10 a été intitulé Règlement modifiant le règlement 2088, intitulé Règlement consolidé de construction de la cité de Côte-Saint-Luc, afin d'abroger le texte de l'article 7-7D et de remplacer par un nouveau texte, va être présent, présenté à une réunion subséquente pour adoption. L'objectif de ce règlement est d'abroger la deuxième et troisième puce de l'article 7-7D, par conséquent, l'obligation d'installer un système de gicleur automatique lorsqu'un agrandissement affecte plus de 15 de la superficie du plancher de bâtiments existant ne serait dorénavant plus requis. L'installation d'un système de gicleur automatique sera maintenant requis lors de la reconstruction d'un bâtiment détruit par un, une, un incident. OK. So, uh, Et Marcel, on dit. So this is an avis de motion. Notice the motion, there's no seconder on it, but would you like to explain it in any way? Right. So uh, I'll explain in English. I just, the French was relatively explanatory, but um, it's, this is just to remove the obligation for uh, sprinklers uh, in, in, in the present mm -hmm. bylaw, um, if there's a construction over 15% of a floor space, you were required to have sprinklers in that new section. Um, the council feels that it may not be necessary quite like that, but we're waiting for the draft bylaws for the details. But the, 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 at least the sentiment is that we, sh we shouldn't oblige that on to residents that are reconstructing a smaller portion of their home um, and therefore incurring significant costs. Right. Basically, when we build new uh, structures, new homes in our city, we require sprinklers. But for the older homes that do renovations, we felt this was quite onerous uh, for them and would not necessarily protect the house because the requirement was only to uh, require them to put sprinklers in a certain part. So let the rest of the house burn. But um, basically, it's going to only do so much. So right now, we're removing that requirement to be more tolerant and lenient and accommodating. But we're still requiring sprinklers in new construction. So that's the notice of motion on that one. And now we're going to move to the next one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that I give a notice of motion that bylaw number 2345-1 to be entitled bylaw to amend the bylaw number 2345 governing the demolition of a buildings in order to repeal the text of article 3.3 definition of demolition and to replace it by a new text will be present, presented at a later meeting for adoption. The objective of this bylaw is to replace the demolition definition by a new definition in order that the, the major renovation projects of a building of a residential usage group is not considered as a demolition as defined in the regulation. Do you want to explain it more? You want me it's, to? It's, it's the, the present bylaw was as well onerous and, and not as clear as it could have been. Um, so we're going to be changing the bylaw for, uh, that requires a, uh, the demolition process to be followed only when a building is completely demolished, i.e. a wrecking ball down to the foundations or more. Um, that will be determined to be a demolition if, if it's just going to be the renovations, the complete renovations of the inside of a building, uh, leaving the structure standing. We're considering not having that as a demolition anymore. Right. Okay, I think that explains it as it is. So that's another notice of motion. And now we're going to move on to the next item under urban development, which is 9.1, the site planning and architectural integration programs. 9.1A is deferred. That's the McMurray uh, house that was earlier discussed uh, where we deferred the demolition request. And then we move to 9.1C. See, you don't need a resolution to defer. We're just deferring, right? In this particular case, no. Not, right. Mm -hmm. Not for this. Uh, but for B, uh, which is Wallenberg, uh, Council Torchman. Uh, I'm just getting to it. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the site planning and architectural integration programs received July 23rd, 2019, showing the modifications to the, to the, hmm, to the facade replacement of the existing brick and windows to an existing single-family detached uh, house on lot 156833 at 6535 Wallenberg and prepared by 
Accordéon Architecture for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of July 31st, 2019 be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Côte St. Luke. Moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? Councillor Torgman, you want to explain it? Well, um, I'm just getting to the, to the drawings on this one. Uh, this is, so this was a, the renovations to the, um, the exterior facade of a, of a building. Um, it, it's, it, you know, I, I don't have much to add to this one. Um, it's it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, okay, As a, well, Councillor Torchman is a member of the PAC, so, and Councillor Bricou is uh, not uh, able to be with us today. She's out of town. So uh, you're doing a great job, doing a great <laughs> job, no problem. This was a uh, change in the facade and it's a nice picture. So moved by uh, Councillor Torchman, seconded by Councillor Kobach, all in favor. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move on to item C, which is uh, Wavell. Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the site planning and architectural integration programs received July 17, 2019, showing the elevations of a new one story front extension, modifications to the existing front entrance, adjacent to the study room for an existing institutional building on lot 105. 1943 at 7946 and 7950 Wavell and prepared by Cohen and Rubin Architects for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of July 31st, 2019 be approved according to, prov to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. So moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? This is just a modification to um, a, a previous approval for an extension um, and um, just a, there's an extension to the front to the building uh, to the lot line um, and we're allowing a uh, an additional entrance um, to be constructed on the side of that extension. This is the school on Wavell. Correct. It's uh, the Yavna school on Wavell. Yavna school. Yavna school. Right. Okay. So uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and now we move to item number 10, Councillor Kovac, the agglomeration stats. What about the uh, minor exemptions? Oh, sorry, there's a minor exemption minor for, uh, there's an, which one? There's one more. Oh, there are minor exemptions because they're the same one. Minor exemptions back to, okay, Chamberlain, 5597 Chamberlain, Councillor right. Torchman. Okay, so this one's a little bit longer. Okay. I read all of these? Just, uh, just to be no. resolved. Okay. Uh, that in accordance with the provisions of bylaw G18-0005, the request for a minor exemption regarding the proper property located at 5597 Chamberlain, lot 1054429, be and is hereby approved, the whole as more amply delineated here under. Uh, do I, re I go into the actual request? He has to read through all the stuff, right? Uh, just yeah. the, uh, yeah, yes, it, You're supposed to read the it nature all. Of the exemption yeah. is. Okay. So you have to yeah. read the rest. The nature, okay. The request is in order to allow the existing single family detached dwelling built in 1963 under permit number 2057, one to be located at 1.85 meters, so that's six feet, 6.07 feet from the northwest landline instead of the minimum requirement site setback of 1.98 meters or 6.5 feet. Uh, and two, to have a proposed rear concrete back balcony to be located at 2.19 meters from the rear landline instead of the minimum required distance of 3.05 meters from the rear landline. The whole, notwithstanding the provisions of the bylaw number 2217, Annex B, Zone RU uh, 29, and Article 4-4-5A. So uh, that's, oh. Second it. I think move and second it. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Okay, so that's just for a minor exemption. And now we move on to another minor, minor exemption, which is the Yavne one. Now we're going to Yavne. Councillor? 9.2C is deferred. 9.2B is, yeah. is deferred. Again, it's 5.616 McMurray. And now we're moving back to Yavne. Councillor Torchman. 
that in accordance with the provision of bylaw G18-0005, the request for a minor exemption regar regarding the property located at 7946 and 7950 Wavell, lot 105 bn is hereby approved the whole as more amply delineated here under. The request concerns the new front extension only in order to allow an existing inst institutional building. Two, uh, one, to be located at 0, 0.0 meters from the front land line facing Wavell Road instead of the minimum required front setback of 7.62 meters. Two, to have the proposed lot coverage ratio of 38.65% instead of the maximum required lot coverage ratio of 38.14%. And three, to have no on-site parking for the employees instead of having an on-site parking area for the employees. The whole notwithstanding to the provisions of bylaw number 2217 Annex B Zone IR5 and Article 7-3-1. Furthermore, this request distinguishes itself from the minor exemption request previously approved by resolution number 190629 in order to modify the terms of the said request. Moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? So this was already explained under the Yavne request. It's the Correct. same thing, but it's a minor exemption. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now, Councilor Kovac, item 10. Thank stand. you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Council takes the following stance in view of any agglomeration. Council meetings to be held in October 2019 as follows. To authorize the Mayor or his duly authorized replacement to make any decisions he deems necessary and in the best interest of the City of Cote St. Luke and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the Agglomeration Council meetings to be held in October 2019 based on the information to be presented during those meetings. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to other business. Second question period, any questions? Move for adjournment. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Kovac moved, seconded by Councilor Erdely. All in favor? All in favor? Councilor Kovac? We're adjourned. Thank you.